A Biosafety Cabinet BSC, also called a Biological Safety Cabinet or Microbiological Safety Cabinet, is an enclosed, ventilated laboratory workspace for safely working with materials contaminated with or potentially contaminated with pathogens requiring a defined biosafety level. Several different types of BSC exist, differentiated by the degree of biocontainment required. BSCs first became commercially available in 1950. Topic Purposes The primary purpose of a BSC is to serve as a means to protect the laboratory worker and the surrounding environment from pathogens. All exhaust air is HEPA filtered as it exits the biosafety cabinet, removing harmful bacteria and viruses. This is in contrast to a laminar flow clean bench, which blows unfiltered exhaust air towards the user and is not safe for work with pathogenic agents. Neither are most BSCs safe for use as fume hoods. Likewise, a fume hood fails to provide the environmental protection that HEPA filtration in a BSC would provide. However, most classes of BSCs have a secondary purpose to maintain the sterility of materials inside the product. Topic: <laughs> Classes. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention (CDC) classifies BSCs into three classes. These classes and the types of BSCs within them are distinguished in two ways, the level of personnel and environmental protection provided and the level of product protection provided. <laughs> Class 1 Class I cabinets provide personnel and environmental protection but no product protection. In fact, the inward flow of air can contribute to contamination of samples. Inward airflow is maintained at a minimum velocity of 75 feet per minute 0.38 meters per second. These BSCs are commonly used to enclose specific equipment e.g. centrifuges or procedures e.g. aerating cultures that potentially generate aerosols. BSCs of this class are either ducted connected to the building exhaust system or unducted recirculating filtered exhaust back into the laboratory. Topic Class Two Class Two cabinets provide both kinds of protection of the samples and of the environment since makeup air is also HEPA filtered. There are five types: Type A1, formerly A, Type A2, formerly A, B3, Type B1, Type B2, and Type C1. Each type's requirements are defined by NSF International Standard 49, which in 2002 reclassified A, B3 cabinets, classified under the latter type if connected to an exhaust duct as type A2, and added the type C1 in the 2016 standard. About 90% of all biosafety cabinets installed are Type A2 cabinets. Principles of operation use motor driven blowers fans mounted in the cabinet to draw directional mass airflow around a user and into the air grill, protecting the operator. The air is then drawn underneath the work surface and back up to the top of the cabinet where it passes through the HEPA filters. A column of HEPA filtered, sterile air is also blown downward, over products and processes to prevent contamination. 
Air is also exhausted through a HEPA filter, and depending on the type of Class II BSC, the air is either recirculated back into the laboratory or pulled by an exhaust fan, through ductwork where it is expelled from the building. The Type A1 cabinet, formerly known as Type A, has a minimum inflow velocity of 75 feet per minute. The downflow air, considered contaminated, splits just above the work surface the BSC's smoke split and mixes with the inflow. This air is drawn, through ductwork, up the back of the cabinet where it is then blown into a positive pressure, contaminated plenum. Here, the air is either recirculated, through a HEPA filter, back down over the work zone, or exhausted out of the cabinet also through a HEPA filter. Sizing of HEPA filters and an internal damper are used to balance these air volumes. This type is not safe for work with hazardous chemicals even when exhausted with a thimble or canopy to avoid disturbing internal air flow, the Type A2 cabinet, formerly designated A, B3, has a minimum inflow velocity of 100 feet per minute. A negative air pressure plenum surrounds all contaminated positive pressure plenums. In other respects, the specifications are identical to those of a Type A1 cabinet. Type B1 and B2 cabinets have a minimum inflow velocity of 100 feet per minute, and these cabinets must be hard ducted to an exhaust system rather than exhausted through a thimble connection. Their exhaust systems must also be dedicated 1 BSC per duct run, per blower. In contrast to the Type A1 and A2 cabinets, Type B BSCs use single-pass airflow air that does not mix and recirculate in order to also control hazardous chemical vapors. Type B1 cabinets split the airflow so that the air behind the smoke split is directed to the exhaust system, while air between the operator and the smoke split mixes with inflow air and is recirculated as downflow. Since exhaust air is drawn from the rear grill, the CDC advises that work with hazardous chemistry be conducted in the rear of the cabinet. This is complicated, since the smoke split, demarking the rear of the cabinet, is an invisible line that extends the width of the cabinet approximately 10 to 14 inches from the front grille and drifts as the internal HEPA filters load with particulate. The Type B2 cabinet, also known as a total exhaust BSC, is expensive to operate because no air is recirculated within. Therefore, this type is mainly found in such applications as toxicology laboratories, where the ability to safely use hazardous chemistry is important. Additionally, there is the risk that contaminated air would flow into the laboratory if the exhaust system for a Type B1 or B2 cabinet were to fail. To mitigate this risk, cabinets of these types generally monitor the exhaust flow, shutting off the supply blower and sounding an alarm if the exhaust flow is insufficient. The Type C1 BSC was born out of necessity to control infectious material, chemical hazards, reduce operating costs, and add flexibility in modern laboratories. The Type C1 moves air by mixing inflow air with the air in the columns of downflow air marked for recirculation. Air above a clearly delineated section of the work surface is drawn by a second internal fan where it is exhausted through a HEPA filter. The C1 differs from a Type A in that it can use this single pass airflow, and when installed in a ducted operating mode, can protect from hazardous chemistry, like the Type Bs. 
The C-1 also differs from the Type BBSCs in several ways, 1 it does not require a hard-connected, dedicated exhaust system and blower to operate, 2 pending a risk assessment, the BSC can run for an extended duration to increase operator protection during a remote exhaust system failure, and 3 Type C-1 BSCs can run without being connected to an exhaust system at all. Class II cabinets are the commonly used cabinets in clinical and research laboratories. Topic: <laughs> Class III. The Class III cabinet, generally only installed in maximum containment laboratories, is specifically designed for work with BSL-4 pathogenic agents, providing maximum protection. The enclosure is gas-tight, and all materials enter and leave through a dunk tank or double-door autoclave. Gloves attached to the front prevent direct contact with hazardous materials. Class III cabinets are sometimes called glove box. These custom built cabinets often attach into a line, and the lab equipment installed inside is usually custom built as well. <laughs> Ergonomics Biosafety cabinets are used on a daily basis for hours. Besides protection of user and sample material, the human design factors ergonomics of the work become more and more important. This includes reduction of the noise level for a more convenient working atmosphere, a height adjustable stand or stool for optimized sitting position, panorama side windows, more light within cabinet, 10 degrees angled front sash enables better sitting position as well as strong light sources, better view within cabinet to improve the working conditions. topic ultraviolet lamps the cdc does not recommend the installation of uv lamps in bscs the american biological safety association supports this position citing the safety risk to personnel shallow penetration reduced effectiveness in high relative humidity and the frequent need to clean and replace the bulb UV lamps should not be used as a primary source of surface decontamination within a BSC. However, these assertions have been formally disputed in at least one peer-reviewed article which points out that there is no cited basis for the need to remove dust and dirt from bulbs, Properly functioning biosafety cabinets have very clean air so dust is less likely to build up Laboratories are generally air-conditioned which eliminates the concern over humidity inhibition of UV effectiveness With proper use UV exposure risk to users is very low UV disinfection is effective for germicide and verucide as well as inhibiting DNA contamination from PCR. UV disinfection has the advantage of not leaving residues like physical disinfectants. The relative safety and risks of UV versus other disinfection techniques, which also entail risks, should be considered. Topic. Maintenance and service Cabinets need to be maintained on a regular schedule. During this certification check, the airflow and the filter capacities are verified. The filters have a limited lifespan, determined by the air quality within the laboratory space and the amount of particles and aerosols generated inside the BSC work zone. 
As these filters load, the internal fan is required to do more work to push, pull the same volume of air through them. Newer cabinets measure the air flow constantly and self-compensate fan performance to ensure constant volumes of air moving through the filters and the cabinet. If the flow drops below desired performance an audio and visual alarm will alert the operator. Changing the filter should be limited to trained persons as the filter is potentially contaminated. This can be done either after the cabinet has been decontaminated using a gaseous procedure using formaldehyde, chlorine dioxide or vaporized hydrogen peroxide or a bag in bag out procedure. When an UV light is used, this lamp should be checked and changed as well. UV lights decrease in power over time, resulting in diminished disinfection of the working area. <laughs> <laughs> Work practices As with work on open bench tops, work performed within a BSC must be performed carefully and safely. To avoid contamination and the risk of personnel exposure, the CDC advises investigators to follow best practices to reduce and control splatter and aerosol generation, such as keeping clean materials at least 12 inches from aerosol-generating activities and arranging the workflow, from clean to contaminated. In particular, open flames, not necessary within the clean environment of a Class II or III BSC, cause disruption of the airflow inside. Once work inside a BSC has been completed, it is necessary to decontaminate the surfaces of the BSC as with other lab equipment and materials. When a BSC is serviced or relocated, including replacement of HEPA filters, it must be gas decontaminated. Gas decontamination involves filling the BSC with a poisonous gas, most commonly formaldehyde gas. Topic. See also Fume hood Laminar flow cabinet